Get the limited edition signed poster by donating $100. Your donations will support the hardworking team who made the UBC a reality. Thank you so much. How good is your backgammon? Prove yourself by downloading the new Backgammon Galaxy app for free. Play against players from all over the world, get a Galaxy rating, and see how you rank among the stars. See you in the Backgammon Galaxy app. Subscribe to the Galaxy newsletter and get tournament info, product news, special discounts, community updates, free content, and much more. Book your room for the Backgammon World Championship and Monte Carlo Open. Limited rooms available and only 500 room nights, so hurry up and book now. Join the UBC 2023 Contender Tournament and the Estafter Tournament. Nick Blazier here. Buy my book. It's available on Amazon now. An intuitive approach to match study. To skip the numbers and the calculations and develop your score feel. Coming soon. Backgammon Masterclass by Super Grandmaster Masayuki Mochisuki and Grandmaster Mark Olson. Subscribe to the Galaxy Newsletter to get information about the book launch. Visit the Galaxy Shop for luxury backgammon boards and accessories. Designed by players, for players. New board, primal, limited edition, only 10 boards made. Order now. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up, Tavla fans? This is Mark Olson and Nick Blazier. We are here at match eight at the UBC final between Sandra Lilov and Mochi. The score is 8-6 to Sander so far. You get one point for the win and one point for the PR win, whoever plays the lowest PR, and they play best of 12 matches. So basically, whoever gets to 13 points first wins the UBC championship title. It's very exciting because the score is only 8-6. We saw Sander with a big lead in the beginning, Mochi catching up, and the average PR is also very close, Sander being a little bit ahead. So what do you think, Nick, so far about the UBC final 2022? Yeah, I think uh, Sander just coming off winning his first point of the day in the last three matches uh, in, in match seven there. So uh, really needed something to get on the scoreboard after a five point run for Mochi to get right back in this. He's still Sander, still a big favorite in this matchup, of course, um, probably at least two to one, if not three to one to, to win to win this out from here. But, but man, that's Mochi's chances have gotten a lot better since they were at the end of day one, for sure, at the end of match four. Uh, so he's clawing back into it, and we're seeing him show up with their sharpest back end that we've seen in a couple of matches in, in last match, which is really exciting. We'll see if the, the beer keeps solving problems for Sander in, in the fourth match of the day here. Yep. <laughs> that beer sure did change things because Sander was <laughs> shaky the first two matches on day two. It wasn't himself. You know, he was low on energy and I was getting really worried on his behalf because it's it just seemed like a deja vu of 2019 all over again. But Sander got that beer. I, I didn't I didn't see the brand. It was some sort of Japanese beer. And it seems <laughs> that that energized him to get right back to the Sander that we know. So yeah. <laughs> I think he's going to keep the, that, uh, that momentum going. But let's see. Yeah. I kind of want to see the even scoreline going into day three. I feel like that's the biggest sweat. We'll see if Mochi can get two <laughs> points out of this one. But it should be a close race either way. If if Sander can take two, he's going to be in the driver's seat. He's going to have a ton of opportunities to just pick up two or three more points in the final day. Uh, so, yeah, a lot at stake in this match eight here. Yes, definitely. Before we go to the match, guys, remember to like the video because we're trying to break the record every day here. So your like actually matters, and we can help distribute backgammon onto YouTube and get new fans and new backgammon players. Uh, so please like the video and subscribe, of course, if you haven't already done that. And uh, let's head to the match, Nick. I'm ready. Let's do it. There's the leaderboard uh, affirming what we were talking about there. Close PR race with Sander with an edge. 8-6 scoreline. Yeah, Sander played at a PR of 2.65 so far. That's uh, as good as good as it gets. It really is. Yeah, a high two, not what Mochi's hoping for. Definitely shooting for that, like, like right around a two, maybe below for that SGM kind of title stuff oh, that he pulled sorry. off. And ah, no, Sander no. had pulled off like oh. a 2.2, right? At the <laughs> Contender Series. <laughs> Sander opening up the second beer there. The magic weapon. <laughs> the secret juice. Yeah. Is that in the, the UBC rule set? Is that allowed? 
Of course it is. It's not a performance enhancing <laughs> substance or anything like this? Okay, okay. I better be able to drink my coffee then. Thank you. Thank you. Ready to roll the dice, my friend? I want to thank you for the, all the fun. Let me know if I get drunk and talk too much. You can, you can just say, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love Sandra, right? <laughs> I'm rooting for Mochi to say that to him. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's gonna> be... <laughs> All right, standard opening. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Transcriber's not at the board. <laughs> Six one six three five four Sorry, double three. double. Sorry, I didn't notice. So funny. <laughs> so, you know, like focus. <laughs> Well, he makes it more fun, that's for sure. <laughs> I think the, uh, the transcriber has arrived. Now he just has to catch up. Long day for a transcriber, too, let me tell you. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Oh, surprise, in the back? What do you have in the back? <laughs> New dice? What? No. What? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> okay, big roll for Mochi. I think we just stack up the seven, right? It's pretty close, though. Maybe with the turn cube we could go for it. I took it. <laughs> And can we cube this already? There's no points. It's a lot more decisive there. But I mean, with the race lead, there's not a lot for Sander in this game. I think I think we can. Uh, it's not only that Mochi has a, a good position, it's also that Sander has a terrible position here. Wow, he finds a significant miss there, not maintaining more contact than this, too. He should have stayed oh, that was in a the mistake? outfield. Ah, yeah, pretty sizable. It's got to be a big mistake. Oh, yeah, that's a blunder. Yeah, Sander yeah. not now he's tuned under in. blitz threat, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was yeah. a horrible blunder from Sander. So this is going to make the cube pretty clear. Um, probably had one on the borderline anyway, regardless of play. It's but definite yeah. market loss here. Uh, not a market loss. It's it's enough to cube. You mean right? Yeah. Well, there's definitely um, there, oh, are there are that will lose this market. There are market yeah. losers. Correct. Yeah. Suddenly I, we added pointing on head on the four point. And that's just going to be pretty decisive. I don't think this is a difficult cube to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's going to take his time, though. Not when he's used to seeing. <laughs> he's used to Sander putting more pressure on him. Oh, mm. double four from Mochi. Yeah, what's it's the best way to take advantage of this, though? Of course, we'd question. like to make a board point on head, but we can win the most probably just playing 18 to 10, right? Yeah, but I think you got to go for the blitz attack and make two winner board yeah, points here. It I looks think pretty. this is the play. Look oh, at this. Really? 18 wow. to 10 is better. Yeah. This distribution okay. doesn't look great, and we still have to find some way off the bar point here. Look at the differences yeah. in gammons. Wow. That's quite surprising. That that's it's not enough to swing it. Yeah. 12% gammon if you just run all the way, but with 85% yeah. winning chances. I think this is the issue he's going to find with it, is that he hates the stack he leaves. Um, and you can't really improve that by making the deuce instead. So I think that's the biggest. It's just the distribution isn't so great. you know. And we're still like threatening a lot of gammons when we make a play like this. Uh, obviously not as many, but we just but win too much easier. Yeah, it, we it's it seems almost impossible to lose the game after we play eighteen to ten. But I'm still a bit surprised here. Yeah, I would go for eight to four, seven to three here for the for the blitz mm -hmm. attack. You have eleven men in the zone. Sandra has nothing here, nothing to be afraid of. As we tend to do, not too much at stake on this single decision, but. Um, because they're so close and so different, he's going to have to spend a lot of time figuring that out. Yeah, not too yeah. surprising to see the blitz attack. I agree with you. Ooh, Sanders' body language. He's sort of expressed Sorry. something. <laughs> I'm not sure what that meant. Maybe he meant that he had a preference for the other play. 
So is this just the opportunity to run off the anchor now? Um, of course, we'd like to bring material down to make the five point. But again, like our big liability after the last play is getting stuck on the 18 here. Yes, for sure. Mochi is considering coming off with both. Uh, but I think what swings the decision for this play is that you get that builder to the open five point. Yeah, it actually, I mean, it happens to be very strongly duplicated too, right? Since That's true. Six on both sides. That's yeah. a good point. But, but usually... I mean, from a freedom perspective, it's better to come... Oh, that oh, play. He goes for offense. That yeah, one. Okay. Oh, he really goes for the offense. Yeah. That... And yeah, in the but... rollout of one, he's happy. <laughs> yeah, but he, he missed an opportunity there, Mochi, to basically win the game, just to come off the 18 point. Now Sandra has some contact. Yeah, what's the best path from here now? Like, we really don't yeah. want to let our opponent have the outfield, so maybe just hitting on the ace is fine. Oh, this one is fun, huh? Because, yeah, because yeah. there's so many possibilities here. Oh, I like this 6-4, 6-3. But yeah, the the issue, you can't clean up both of them to the 7 point, because now when your opponent rolls 4-3, 4-5, 4-6, like, they're giving your anchor a lot of problems, and he's got full, like, outfield control, right? Yeah. So this feels like the human play, yeah. It does. It's just that when you made the 7 point already, he's, Sanders getting primed, so you yes. kind of want him where you ha have him where you want him already. So it's, But he does have a lot of men in the zone, and... It does make sense also to go for a blitz attack. That was a tricky one. This was another kind of difficult play for me. I guess uh, we can just clean up now. But yeah, it's hard to come out and provoke against a better board like that. But when you're missed, I guess you have a lot of good outfield control. Yeah. 2 1 must have to just start two points. He needs a board as soon as possible. Yeah, there's, the, there's no other play here than slotting the two points. Sanders sees it. Uh, the the downside is that you have that immediate like weakness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have that immediate weakness that Mochi can exploit by running off the anchor. Will he run off the no. anchor here? Uh, too many shots, too many going to cover at least. No, one. look at this. Look at this. You you oh, were wow. supposed to run off the anchor. Yeah, I felt That's it. That's a hard find, yeah. I felt it. It's you got to exploit that. Oh, now Sander really weakness. needs to clean that blot up, by the way, too. Uh, before, there was a little bit of, like, return contact value. Now we just have to play deep. We hate the play otherwise, and we're against a five point or a four-point board. It's just too risky to be back there now. But, but it's, not, it's not about that, Nick. I think it's about not giving, t putting too many blots in your inner board. Because if, if Sander plays 13 to 2, Mochi can play anything off the 18 point. Like, 2, 3, just move both checkers off the 18 point. 5-4, uh, 6-3, doesn't matter what, he can just move from the 18 point. And the same with this, this the, the same with this move. That's why it's so weak. If you play, if you play 17 to 6, you have two blots. That means you can hit and cover one of them next roll. Yeah, good play, Sander. Well, she's still in the driver's seat, but uh, Gammon's evaporating. Uh, Maybe I it is time to go now too. I think it is. Falcon. I think it is. Uh, he could duplicate a little bit, duplicate aces if he covers up the ace point. But usually, double falcon is the way to go. Yeah, the sixes that hit and continue yeah. to cover. Good play. Strong. That's a good find. Yeah. That was a good find. Sander rolls poorly. Yeah. Likely to decide the race anyway. Most likely, Mochi is gonna clean up here. Yeah. That's. As close to a gin position in a long race that you can ever get. Well, Sander has for different distribution, <laughs> but okay. Four crossovers, pretty nice. <laughs> Efficient. Sander needs some double sixes. But look at the PR, actually. <laughs> Sander's leading now. Yeah. Uh, despite that horrible blunder he did early in the game. Better the singer than the backhand. Those holding games present some difficult decisions. Both of them had a lot of them. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. I want to resign, but okay, we just do okay. both. Okay. Thank you. Are you okay? I'm okay, okay. Sorry. The tempest clock. Oh, I thought it was my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Two crossovers. Six, six, three times in a row, still under. Oh, Sanders still got to save the gammon here, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Is there? I've seen worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that should do it. That should do it. Sander slamming the table so hard with his fist that the, even the camera, the board camera, is shaking. Yeah, this is a gin position. Nearly. Nearly. It's so close to a gin position that even XT says it's a hundred point zero percent winning chances for Mochi here. <laughs> And we do get a long race here so they can grind their PRs down because this is just easy decisions. Yeah. Mochi had a really tough game in this game. Lots of small, difficult decisions. Yeah. And he has five errors, as we can see, which is quite a lot for Mochi, of course. And Sandra just made one mistake, which was a big blunder. Yeah, yeah was stepping up with the rear checker rather than staying back for contact. So 2-0 for Mochi. Mm -hmm. Coming soon, Backgammon Masterclass by Super Grandmaster Masayuki Mochisuki and Grandmaster Mark Olson. Subscribe to the Galaxy Newsletter to get information about the book launch. Yeah, that's uh, it's not always intuitive if you haven't started or studied those double sixes openings exactly how to play them. But you play pretty loose when you're that far down in the race already. Three five hits back. Six three. three. I think it just hops out to the sixteen, right? A little mini decision for, oh, for Mochi here. Okay. Too. Okay. Mo yeah, yeah. Mochi found the best move. Good play, not Mochi. Not so many double hits when your other two checkers are so deep. I can see the merit of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna find one though, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One three was duplicated. It was double hitting and making the five. Enters with two. Small advantage for Sander, but not enough to be thinking about the cube or adjusting at this score yet. No. Uh, five two probably just makes the ace to stay safe, huh? It would have been ace. nice to make the eleven, but we can't leave shots in board. No, but the, at least a double shot in the board, so we have to make the ace here. It's not a bad thing to make the ace actually. You take away half of your opponent's roll. Yeah. And you I clean think... up your blots. Wow, this is a tough decision between the anchor. I guess only eight in the zone means you just have to hit. Yeah, okay. You have to hit, and you don't have an, a, a worthy alternative here because yeah. playing 13 to 8 doesn't do anything. That's the mm -hmm. problem. So, this is the play, Mochi. No Scary need. Scary once your opponent makes the ace point, though, and threatens a blitz. You think I should just have an anchor now, you know? <sighs> it's also more flexible to have a builder on the 9 point. But mm -hmm. you just gotta hit, you know? When in doubt, hit. Hitting is yeah. the best thing to do. The, you, you need an excuse not to hit, typically, here early in the game. Mm -hmm. And there's just no clear excuses here. No, there are no clear excuses. You gotta hit Mochi. You have three feet down to re-establish an anger next time. Oh, oh. that's a blunder. And take that, a long-term asset. Yeah. It's kind of a. This is like an exotic play Mochi just found here because hitting is just r correct nine out of ten times, if not more. So he overthought that one. Now he dances. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are we getting close to a cube here? 31 pips lead? This feels like nothing with eight in the zone and two back, like the deepest points made. So we're threatening a blitz against an anchor. It just has all day to enter. I wouldn't think so. Closer than I thought. It's a little bit too early. I think uh, yeah. Mochi's position is so weak that Sander might be tempted to double already. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But it is a little bit too early here. You he need tends to send these on the early side of anything, too, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a cube from Sander here. Yeah, it would bit be of a, a gift for Mochi. 59 millipoint mistake, which is 5.9 percentage of a point of equity that Sander would be giving away by doubling here, because we, we're never going to see Mochi mm -hmm. passing this cube. It doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. There's like a less than a 1% chance, I think, from what you pass on this cube. So, it was a little bit too early for Sander. 
This moves a lot of checkers and makes the blitz a little more real, but I uh, can't make any new points. So Mochi just needs to enter, bring a checker to the outfield, and he'll be doing fine. This uh, hitting decision, however, is different for Mochi. This one is tough. Wow, there's no way. I, I, th I was thinking just coming out to the 14. Yeah. I'm surprised that he can go for it here. But if he didn't last time, then how is he going to find it this time? <laughs> here there is a, definitely an excuse for not hitting. And that is yeah. you're opening yourself up to getting blitzed if you hit. But nevertheless, the hit is still the best play. Look yeah. at the differences in, difference in winning chances. 42 versus 37 and a half. He's quite likely, even when hitting the outfield or anything like this, to have an opportunity to reestablish an anchor next time. Yes. The points made her so weak, but uh, ooh, that's a hard one to find. The thing about the hit, too, is that it doesn't even, like, recapture his racing lead or anything like this, you know? So it's not decisive, either. It's not decisive, but, you know, you send a second man back, and you remove a builder from the zone, and you do catch up some pips in the race, and there's a yeah. lot of good things. Leaves are pretty front-loaded, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, if he aired on the other side, last play, it's hard to see how when they're this close that he's going to go for the hit now, you know? It's yes. It's like much scarier than it was last time. Exactly. This is much scarier. Against a three-point board, more builders in the zone. This 20-14 uh, to 14 checker is doing good work against the block back on the 24 as well. Um, it's not like a poorly placed checker when you just run and keep the anchor. That's right. It does give him a lot of opportunities to make the five point this roll, so maybe the tempo is worth quite a bit here. It's not that Mochi is scared of getting primed, but obviously it would be a big improvement for Sander if he were to make the five point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is worth spending some time on this decision because over the board you never know. I mean, like we do, we can see that it's basically borderline, but over the board you don't know that, and these two plays are so different in terms of game plan mm -hmm. that you need to spend some time here. But this this position shows us why the rule, when in doubt, hit is so powerful, <laughs> because <laughs> even when it looks this scary, you sc wow, he wow. finds it. That's impressive oh. stuff. Nice. I, I'm just baffled by why he didn't hit last time then but I mean that yeah. was a good find by Mochi I was noticing the sixes from the bar a little bit awkward we don't love coming out to the bar point but it's uh, anyone's game now too Mochi's captured quite a bit by hitting and getting away with it there should end up with the double shot I don't think Sanders gonna find burying 8-2 to two. he can still be leading the race even when he's hit and that checker is gonna be out of play permanently for the game now just feels too stiff <laughs> yeah, you just gotta come out to the 18, Sander. This is very ugly. <sighs> They're reasonably yeah, close. It's reasonably so close, but a, a small mistake. Yeah. <laughs> more, more dilemmas, but I think an offensive point feels pretty strong. We gotta start unstacking at some point. You gotta start unstacking. It's just worth leaving those blots in the outer board. Uh, for the, to make the four point, you know, the four point is just m more valuable. But there is a little bit of a, this is a trap, you know, this is one of those small traps that the backgammon guards lay out for us. Mm -hmm. And we might blunder or at least make a mistake here. And that's certainly the case for Mochi. It's not that easy. To find There's the a bigger best signal in not as urgently wanting to anchor now that your opponent has a dead checker too, though. That's uh -huh. true. That might yeah. be the tell, actually. That, yeah. mochi, that that lowers the risk significantly by yeah. staying uh, split in your back position. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. He might be through his clock by the end of game two here. This one's really giving him a lot of trouble. Why are you smiling? <laughs> <laughs> Sanders asking Mochi why he's smiling. <laughs> it's just sometimes Mochi's smiling, you know, he's playing backgammon, doing what he loves to do. Yeah, I still think like the biggest issue here is just like, yeah, we've made no progress towards containing those two back checkers. Now we've got like actually comparable boards with the purity of ours at least. Yeah. And I think we're pointing on head, but there's some other options. 
Oh, that would be a creative play not to point on head. Hitting twice looks kind of nice too, though, doesn't it? Oh. In a lot of different ways. Yeah. Just point on head, make the four point board. Yeah, good play, Sandra. That's a good five by Mochi. Yeah, huge anchoring roll. Yeah. No need to bring in another Ooh, block. Double five. I think it just continues to the three. It though. does, but it's a lot Probably better there. for Sandra to have one man back than two men back in this position uh, because of the race lead. It's so yeah. much easier to escape a single checker than two back checkers. Look how close the pure play is for the four duplication and covering the three. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's gotten urgy it. for Mochi to contain this checker. Yeah, he wins a lot more when he does this. And it's uh, one of those perfect, like, 10% gammons for a little over 4% wins kind of trade-off situations. Yeah. I, I think it's cool that Mochi was looking at it. Yeah. When you're playing against a crunched position, purity goes up in value. And that's what... Mm -hmm. Mochi knows this, of course. And that's why he was checking out that 6-5 to five slotting play, super pure. We see here again, too. I mean, maybe we'd think about giving up the midpoint in a lot of games, but once we've buried a checker, we got to stick to that plan and just play safe. Hope yeah. to uh, come we, around and not play for structure here. And we can't really clear the midpoint in any safe manner anyway. It would leave a double yeah. shot. So mm -hmm. it's not really possible. Yeah, there's this one. I like this play, actually. Yeah, Sandra does, too. It's yeah, a borderline decision. What do we do with this now? Is it nice to... Uh, yeah, I guess just stack it up. Okay, sure, sure. Not much else to just do. Just delaying and waiting for Sander to come to us. Sander? Yeah, Sander wants to get into a racing position here. 5-2 is not good. It looks like it's going to slot the 6 for lack of options. This Duplicate is aces. The, it's a terrible roll, huh? Yeah. That was At the issue with clearing the 6, I think, is that we lose that landing spot on a lot of rolls like this. And then you have this play... I mean, this is this is going to be a blunder if he plays this play, but over the board, it's definitely a worthy contender. Well, it buries another checker. I'm not sure it actually helps make progress towards bringing this home, so yeah. it feels pretty thematic to, and the to me to slot, yeah. And the tactics of it, right? It's way less shots when you play 13-6 to six and duplicate aces. Yeah. Here you're going to get destroyed by lots of rolls. Yeah. These can be the hardest, though. Um, when it's it is just, tough. It is tough. You don't tough. like either side, right? <laughs> so you just so much rather not play the role that it's hard to find like the best of the worst. And you can see in Sanders' body language that this this move is tormenting him. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a blunder if he finds this play. Yeah, so what does it accomplish, though? Like, how do you ever get the midpoint home is the problem. You just have to have the seven as long as you have the mid. I think it's, like, just a very big strategic thing here, you know? It's strategic and tactical as well. Because the, on the tactical side, oh, this one leaves a double shot. That's not... I mean, it's better than the other play, actually, than burying more checkers and staying out of harm's way with your back checker. It's a tough play to find. We have the privilege of seeing the computer analysis. Mm -hmm. It's just such a nice duplication after you play 13 to 6, duplicating aces. Because it's, the aces are not just for hitting, it's also for building. Like 3 1, 5 1 makes the 5 point or the 3 point. 6 1 makes the 7 point. So the aces are heavily duplicated. I guess if he makes the right play, maybe we're hitting in the outfield more often than from the anchor. Good play, Sander. Good yeah. play. And even the fi uh, the eights are also duplicated because five three is a eight that hits, and six two uh, is a point making number as well. So it's perfectly well duplicated. Uh, three this, two whiffs. This so I think we need the tempo. I'm surprised we want to keep the spare on the four point though. I would have thought maybe, I guess eight to six looks a little bit weak to create that five stack. Oh, oh, okay. That's gonna a volunteer blunder. the yeah. 
he, yeah, he, the fly shots, I think, is what he's thinking about. Um, he's ha he has the wrong idea here, Mochi. He, mm -hmm. He's going for a priming plan when he should be blitzing. That's the thing. He's front-loaded in the front position. Sander has blots all over, all over the board. Mochi should have done, gone for a blitz attack there and kept his midpoint intact. Surprised these plays run close, of course, making the six point can't be too bad, but it feels pretty natural in this position to just clean up a blot and try to keep scrambling around. Yeah, I would say so too, Nick. And it's also the best play. There is a close second, though. When you, <laughs> It's a very different play than the first play, but the second play is you remake the six point, leave a shot, on your seven point and then step up under the gun to the 22 point. I guess there's a lot of duplicate. It, it's slightly safer to step up now because a lot of Mochi's rolls are now making Mochi's five or seven point. So it's kind of duplicated. He can't make all those points at once. I think it's just long term asset of a five point board is pretty good too. Yes. Oh, this play. Oh, it's not even that far behind. It's a, it's the third best play. A 33 milli mm. point mistake I, to make this play. That one looks tactical. Um, I don't really see the strategic merit of that one. I think there's a lot of duplication going on. Yeah. Like six one four three, which would hit on the 12 point, are also good point making numbers. This is when the game becomes very tactical. And that's why it's taking so long for Sander here. He's simply counting out dice combinations of each variation. He's going to end up under Mochi on the clock, too. Like, spending a surprising amount of time on this. It's because it's so tactical. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's not really pleasant to play this kind of position. It requires a lot of, a lot of thinking and computations in your mind. So now mm -hmm. Sanders looking at this play, making the six point. And if you do that, then you've got to step up with the deuce. There's some tactics there that like the twos don't play quite as well as the uh, aces on the other side of the board, too. And finally, he looks at our play, Nick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This play, which is the best play, but he might have saved it for last because it was his favorite contender. But no, now he puts it back. Tough play over the board, this one. <laughs> no major mistake available, though. No, <laughs> if he can just true. choose one before timing out, he'll be doing well. But he doesn't know that, right? He has to be right. sure that he doesn't make a tactical blunder here, yeah. leaving too many shots or do diversifying Mochi's rolls too much. Okay, he does find the best play. Impressive stuff. Good play, Sandra Lilov. Let's see what Mochi can do. 6-3 is going to make the 5-point. Beautiful but, improvement for Mochi. But Mochi lost some outfield control here. If Sander can roll a 6, he might be out of there. Mm -hmm. That's the weakness of Mochi's position right now. Mm -hmm. For that reason, the 4-3 can probably just hop out. Yeah, that's a nice maneuver. That's what you usually want to do when you can capture the outfield. Even though Mochi is behind in the race and he, he's breaking contact, He's gaining so much outfield control that it's just almost always the right right idea. I think it's worth provoking at the edge here for Sander, yeah. Yeah, he has a better inner board, actually. It's a four-point board versus three-point board. So Sander yeah. needs to play pure. Ooh, that's, a, that's an air ball for Mochi. That's tricky. I would have tempted to make the two-point, but I'm not sure we want to... We could also think about cleaning up and waiting for next roll somehow. I think if we clean up and we play 17 to 15, our uh, Mochi's two rear checkers are perfectly placed to maximize outfield control. Mm, yeah. But it does seem a little bit ugly to play 10 to 4 and put a fourth checker on your four point. Yeah, 16 to 10 can't be an option because uh, it's like things that run past are only going to get a single shot. It's That's just giving up a little too much control. Exactly. That's exactly it. Mochi made a mistake here. Yeah, that's tough though. But I, I mean, I, you saw it, Nick. Yeah. And I saw it. Oh, that's a good perfect. roll. 
perfect roll from the Super Grandmaster. Sander needs to produce no. Ooh, are we gonna see a recube here? Yeah, no gammons really. It's no uh, a small miracle to escape here without being closed out. So it seems reasonable. Exactly the yeah. kind of game. Yeah. What you about send Sander? It to. Could yeah. Sander? I mean, we get to see that it's actually a pass. Okay, good pass, Sander. Good pass. I mean, yeah. some players might be confused there. Those are tempting. I it's would have thought about it on right yes. side. Yeah. Because of the match score. <laughs> yeah, that was a difficult game. Sorry, Alex shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> Sanders joking around with the spectator. Nick Blazer here. Buy my book. It's available on Amazon now. An intuitive approach to match study. You skip the numbers and the calculations and develop your score feel. Yeah, shout out to Nick Blazer's book. Sweet. Uh, you need more time on the car? Yeah, I had that 550. Can I just add the 15 seconds? Okay. Yeah, or do you want to say that if you run out of time, we add them? No, nah, I end? just uh, I think it's just plus this. Then. Oh, you can okay. do it? Okay, please. Here we see the power. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you just add 15 seconds that way. You just right? add it, yeah. It's the Tempest clock is so easy and quick, uh, you know. Because it's an it's an iPhone app, so the configurations is so, are so easy to set. It's not these old-fashioned uh, clocks where you have to press left, left, right, up, down, left, right, and do like a... It's almost like these uh, special hitting combos in Mortal Kombat where <laughs> nobody knows the 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 codes you have to put in to set those damn clocks so the tempest clock is so easy we just added the 15 seconds lost for mochi and here we go again Six, three i think are we splitting for contact here is the question we're down in the race so we're not running this looks nice yeah yeah that's the right idea for mochi now sander wants to hit that guy oh he's gonna hit and now the question i think he makes the five point here this isn't mm. an opening reply where you usually just make the seven point. Okay, I'm wrong. You do make the seven point. I guess it's because yeah. you had six checkers on the midpoint. Yeah, you leave sixes from the bar when you don't need to leave anything. Um, plus, there might be a cube coming here soon at this kind of score. But the thing is, usually on the opening reply, when your opponent splits to the bar, you just make the bar like this. But when you have the three point made, you actually make usually make the five point. But I think here the key was that you had a stacked midpoint even after hitting the first one. And down in the race, I'm not sure he wants to provoke again. Um, the two down, 13 to 11, would be nice, I guess. But I think 13 to 8 is just fine. So we'll enter deep here. And I don't think it's enough for a cube for Sander with Mochi with a slightly better structure. But he does have extra checkers mm. back, so there's going to be gamut yeah, here. I mean, it could actually be a cube, Nick. Yeah. It I think at a more sensitive score, I would think so. But it feels a little early here. No, look uh, at this. Wow, wow. OK, we can clear. send it. That's because a good it's fight. seven yeah. away, three away. I mean, mm -hmm. if it was seven away, four away, it might have been a little bit borderline. But seven away, three away, mm -hmm. you're also decreasing your opponent's gammon value because yeah. he would shoot over the target. Mm -hmm. Nice find there. Good find by Sandra. Really good cube. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't really get to execute the blitzing threat here, unfortunately for Sander. Yeah, things like that, just escaping can be worth so much in a position like this, but oh, uh, Sadie yeah. sent the cube now. Yeah. That's a good roll by Mochi. He just eliminated all of Sander's blitz value. Oh, he's looking at this play. That's Reasonable. a cool play. Is that the best play? Very good play, Sander. Yeah. Very good play. Yeah. It's uh, actually a, a trick here. I it's actually point on head still, right? I think it's better to point on head because mm -hmm. then you don't give up the anger. Yeah, good play, Mochi. Uh, I, the rule that Sandra just applied is that when you can slot against the 21 point, it's usually not that bad because your opponent has to give up an advanced anchor to hit you. So Sandra exploited that and made the five point. Beautiful play. Wow, sixes are duplicated, so he could make the four, but it feels pretty rich. Um, is the tempo worth much here? This is tricky. I'd this be very tricky. tempted to just make the four point board. Yeah, but the, by doing that, you lose your most important priming point right now because the sixes, the eight point is blocking the sixes. And this can make it naturally without volunteering a shot? Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it, it was a little oh, bit too right. rich, so, <laughs> as you said. What can I do? There's only one Sandra. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dodger's always, always just like <laughs> playing everything. <laughs> oh, what is this eight to five play? That's fun. Yeah, the distribution just looks so poor afterward, and wow. there's some forward duplication. Yeah, there's a lot of forward duplication. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it at first, but I mean, it looks very nice. Yeah, he's looking at it. Wow, yeah. this is a tough play to find. Eight to five. Same idea that you were just sharing about the 21 point, though. Most That's right. to give up a very valuable asset, and there is very good tactical duplication here, too. That's right. Yeah, we see 4-5 and 4-2 are building the the 4 point, and 6-4 is building the, the deuce point on Sanders' head, so it's yeah. very nicely duplicated. The 4 is very well might just hit loose if they don't make a point, too, you know? Yeah, that's true. Even a random 4. Mm -hmm. That's the play, Sander. That is a cool play. Super close. But who would ever find the play? Okay, even the great Sander Lidov is going to make the human play here and bury it. another checker. So 3-1. Yeah, looks too nice for distribution if you're to be attacking deep there. Something to think about for sure, though. 4-2 is awkward. Wishes he would have found a more flexible play last time now. Um, what can he do with this? It's just uh, an I annoying roll. <laughs> seven to three and step up, or no, no. Okay. Thirteen to seven. We're clearing yeah, the seven. He finds the best shot. play. Good play, Sander. One checker behind now, so we can't go for pure things anymore. I'm not even sure Mochi really wants to slow him down here, but the distribution oh. seems too nice to go for an attack now, doesn't it? But how do we? Yeah, but how do we play this for Mochi? Because he doesn't want to leave the anchor. He's behind in the race. Yeah. By twenty by sixteen pips after the move. So he doesn't want to give up the anchor. But uh -huh. then how how do you, what else are you gonna play? Oh yeah, yeah look I mean, at this. The, it does come out at top twenty one to thirteen. Looks reasonable. Yeah, I think I would be finding eight to two and then some sort of deuce. You know, yeah. not too picky about that part. Look at Mochi's body language. He it's he feels disgusted that he has to play this because he doesn't want to leave the anchor. It just happens to be the only play that doesn't destroy can, his position. It contains best, and it's not really giving up a whole lot of attacking chances for Sander. So I'm not sure why we would want this passive kind of play that allows our opponent to escape with tempo, you know? This feels yes. a little too weak to me. I yeah. think there's also the fact that Sander has so much crunch, so many checkers behind Mochi's anger, that Mochi can almost keep the anger by just having one man there. It's like a, right. like a one-man anger, you know? It's... Uh, yeah, but he really doesn't want to hit on the deuce for some reason, I guess. He's not even looking at any opportunity or any alternatives like that. Oh, he oh, goes for yeah. the slot there, okay. Tough play for Mochi. Too big of a miss, but yeah. Tough play. Yeah, I, I, th gammons. I, I think I would have found a hit on the deuce as well, Nick. That would have mm -hmm. probably... And then the random deuce. Good shot for Sander. Yeah, simple plan for him. Yeah, Sander's a big favorite now, all of a sudden. Even though he has... <laughs> I didn't know that before. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sander is confused about the match score. He's simply forgetting that Mochi has scored four points so far. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think just playing this position around quietly uh, makes the most sense here, but he can get tempted into attacking and trying to win gamuts. Oh, uh, sure. yeah, but there's not a lot of gamuts here. That's no, not the, the distribution right is just too bad, and we lose yeah. our eight point if our opponent just enters. If that A centers, for for example, this is like good contact for Mochi, really. Yes, it really is. Uh, that that was a, a a bit of a mistake for Sander there. Oh, does he want to use the two to hit with the four point board now? What else can he do? Just play he can safe. Clean up. Yeah, yeah, he can clean up. I don't see how you make the two point and don't think about hitting three days afterward, though. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's the four. You're not going to play eight to two. That's simply too ugly. So yeah. Sander plays the four, and then he looks at this one. Yeah, he was... You called it, Nick. It's not the best play. It was a 40, 42 millipoint mistake, but uh, it was a brave play. Mm -hmm. Six, four covers. All of a sudden, there is a bit of gammon here. Six, four. Yeah. 
Yep. Mochi can just enter. He'll be saving a lot of those. Yeah, Mochi Getting needs in trouble to every time he fans, though. He wants to come in immediately to give Sander some trouble. Now Sander gets to cruise his checkers home safely while Mochi is on the bar. Oh, yeah. So he can actually split out here and leave the double fours from the bar. It's going to get home most often. Seems worth it. Yeah, it I don't Otherwise, really if our opponent enters on the four, we feel under a lot of pressure to get home from there. And for what? Okay. Oh, yeah, something went on with the clock there. Three probably just starts a point, right? Guess he's worried he might get a fly shot next time, so he's just going to oh, play in. Okay. Is that yeah. Gammon saving? Uh, I mean, ah, he didn't contact. Want, yeah. yeah, he didn't want to blood in the inner board. I get it. Yeah, that's yeah. what you meant with the... We can okay. reduce shots by playing into the 5, but the distribution looks way nicer, 12 to 6. It's tricky. Yeah, and you do ensure that even if you roll some a combined 5 next time, that you do get it to safety. Yeah. So it seemed that it was worth shot. that one extra shot. And it works out. And it works out. He gains a lot of pips in the race, though. Uh, oh, not relevant though, because he's way down. Okay, gonna need contact to win this one. Yeah, that's the only yeah, way Mochi can win. And that four, happens four. around 6% of the time. He must have to go with one of the back checkers now though, right? When you're on the bar, you know, it's like, you know, you have to change the aim. One, two, three. This five days is a little weird. 21 to 5 seems like a fairly natural find if you're trying to save gammons, but I guess it hmm. improves our chances of making a board a little bit. Yeah. I would have been a slightly less scared of losing a gammon there and playing 5 to 1. Yeah. Does he want to save a 6? <laughs> <laughs> Sanders getting excited. <laughs> yeah, so we can just unstack the 5 now and get ready to make his board. We'll see if he plays in instead. The four points getting made either way. We have Small a trans transcriber break. <laughs> yeah, we have a transcription error. You play double four bad, you make it different. <laughs> 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 Sanders joking around with Mochi. And Sanders actually right, Mochi didn't make. He did make a, an inferior play with double four. The transcriber we get to see here is not the same transcriber that did the transcription over the board. Mm, yeah. The one we see is Hussein Paknahat, who had the luxury of actually watching the, replaying the video and doing the transcription just for us to see. Sander gets a decision. <laughs> Tricky. Yeah, it seems like there's not enough gammons to play for, but it, yeah, he can lose this game too. It's it's tough to pass up just clearing. Sanders so funny to watch. He's gonna do it. Yeah, good play. It was a borderline correct decision. All right, well, you're gonna get one last shot at it. Six two, he's gonna need. Five, four clears. Oh, he's not going to yeah. go for checkers off here now. Okay. That seems about right. There's yeah. basically zero gammon in this position. Santa wants to clear, and he does. So oh, that's so. basically Jin. Yeah, it's basically Jin. Oh, she just has to finish saving the gammon, and we'll move on to three away, five away, it looks like. Yeah, I think Mochi has like one or two games out of a thousand to win here, to win the game here. <laughs> and Sanders leading significantly in the PR point. Uh, Mochi is playing one of his worst matches so far. But we mm, have to remember yeah. we're, this is actually just game three of this match. It's been a long and complicated match so far. Yeah. And Mochi has had a lot of tough decisions. Can Sander roll enough aces to fall off a roll here? I guess so. Uh, not anymore. Uh. 
So 4-2 to Super Grandmaster Mochi. How good is your backgammon? Prove yourself by downloading the new Backgammon Galaxy app for free. Play against players from all over the world, get a Galaxy rating, and see how you rank among the stars. See you in the Backgammon Galaxy app. Yeah, we'll see if Sander can pick up his first match win of the day here. Still behind. Trying yeah. to catch up, though. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Let's see how, how Mochi plays this 2-1, because as we can see, it's basically a tie even at this score, but Mochi might want to try to decrease the gammon loss potential by splitting the back checkers. No, he does go for the offensive variation that wins more games and more gammons. Tends to be the slot. 5-way, 3-way is going to get some earlier cubes in. I don't think 4 checkers back is going to be enough necessarily. Um, at more sensitive scores, sure. Yeah, this is not a cube yet from Sander. He's got a clear advantage and more gammons than usual, though, so good to slow down and think about it. It's a Six good start. But makes uh, a point. Yeah, this yeah. is going to be enough in a lot of sequences. Two it's should keep the cube off, though. Six can hop out with it. Yeah, yeah definitely keeps the cube off. Two, six. I think 13 to seven. Yeah. Yeah. Five four, you make the eleven and you split, I think. It's still a blitzing structure, it looks like, but yeah, for lack of other options. Yeah, it's not a double yet for San for Sander. He's got a lot of threats here. He he's just one step short from having market losing threats. Mm -hmm. If he had the three point mate or something like this. Oh, that's a pretty good roll. I think the severity of making the five point, though, makes you pause to think about it. I think he's likely yeah. to lose his market by a lot. But uh, Mochi comes out with the lead in that battle, and no cubes for a while now. 6-2 probably just playing for mobility now. you got to do something with your back checkers here. I'm not exactly sure which one is the best yeah. variation. Just run furthest and leave the checker back on the 24 where you want it, right? Okay, Nobody yeah, down and stuff. stripping. Okay. It's not so good to strip the midpoint here in the middle game because Sander's going to come out at some point and then Mochi will... Oh, sorry, Mochi's going to come out at some, some point and then Sander will miss that checker on the midpoint to hit hit with. Nice find to take Ooh. the tempo hit, gets a fan out of it, okay. So Mochi turning this game around now. 4-3 can get a spare on the 6, I think. But yeah, we can uh, also you, go for mobility here. You okay, need to, yeah, 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 you need to step up. Yeah. You need to step up because you're you're stripping the outfield. So. Mm -hmm. One six is just gonna hop up. Ah, I see. Okay. Oh yeah, Sander has less time than Mochi again somehow. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Ooh, five. Oh, it can link with the ten. What? Well, yeah, it can, but it can also make the five point. Yeah, that's wow. where we continue on after that. But the 11 yeah, to no, 8 no, is the no, first thing is, that I saw. Oh, yeah. this is bad. This is such this is such a bad move compared to what you can actually do with this. Now he sees it. Now he sees it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Now he sees it. Yeah. This is a much better move. It's structurally much stronger. I mean, this is oh. the kind of move Sander Not would sure. make when you're trailing in the match and after you've doubled. This is not the move you want to make when you're leading in the match. Increasing the gammons on both sides. I think Mochi probably knows that this is not the double match point move. But of course he's still considering it because it might be worthwhile in the terms of winning gammons. But this move also wins gammons. Yeah, the rack's just so strong. I guess you're frustrated when you make this play and your opponent makes the bar point anchor. Um, yeah. But still you're looking pretty good. After that happens, your opponent doesn't have a lot of time. Your contact's very good. This will be surprising if he can't find that play, though. It just looks very natural. It is a little bit. Um, the, the hitting. This. Okay, he makes the blitz. Okay, that's wow. a big blunder. Okay. Ow, ow, ow. 141 milli points. Sandra dances. Mochi feels good about himself, but little does he know that he just made a huge blunder.
But he can reasonably think about the cube in this kind of situation too. I think it's oh, part yeah. of the trick Look, him probably. Yeah. It could be, yes. You are disconnecting your opponent's back checkers by making the ace point. That's what yeah. it, one of the things he's got going for it. This is like the one um, like three away score where we adjust a little bit less than a lot of the other ones. Uh, so we have enough to be kind of near the, the take pass borderline for a normal money reference. And so that kind of threat still, I mean, given that we're threatening to win a gammon for the match, still worth getting in and, and capitalizing yeah. on that kind of situation. That's a really good find by Mochi because, yeah. it, I mean... This must be why, like what he was thinking about last roll, that he needed to go for more because he was so close to that window. And Sander needs to find a take here. It's not that easy over the board. No, it is not. This is a easy one to let go, but the... Good again, when take. You're, Good when you're take, facing man. three away, you kind of just ignore the gammons and count on your recube, Vig. Yeah. That's the way you can find a lot of those. <laughs> That's an awkward roll for Mochi. He didn't get to put that second checker on the bar. Missed the triple shot. Yeah. And Sandra has a chance to survive now. Oh, wow. Five, wow. Five hits and cleans up a block. What a sequence. We're yeah, going to see have a lot of recubes. Yeah. We're going to see Probably a recube. A, yeah. Might We're going to see. Passable. Yeah, it might even be passable, yeah, because... Look at this. Sander's going to be ahead by eight, 18 pips. Yeah. He even has a shot. Yeah, this is even a pass because the take point is enormous here. Yeah, the I take point is like, what is it? Maybe you know better than me, Nick, but it's got to be like... Yeah, I think it's 30%. 30%. Yeah, 30%? 30 yeah, okay. Yeah, four-way, three-way, the take point is 40. And then the next class of scores is like 30 from there, I think, and then 25 below there. Okay, I would yeah. I would even say my oh. guess was like 35 or something. Maybe that's a little bit too high. Join the UBC 2023 Contender Tournament and the Estafter Tournament. So Sander is back in this match, trailing yeah, scoreline now. <laughs> even scoreline trailing 4-0 and now it's back to 4-4. This is pretty huge for Sander actually because he's also leading the PR point in this match quite significantly. So if Sander could squeeze out a win here. He would be coming into day three with a lead of 10 to 6. So Mochi needs to fight here. Mochi needs to fight. Hope Sander makes a blunder and try to win this game. Or win this match, that is. Double hit looks very nice here. Yeah, 10 in the zone. Unstacking the 6 point. Yeah, and one in, we need to play a okay. slightly what about more this? aggressive with a cube at three-way, three-way. Oh. He's going to find it. Yeah. Find it so fast. That, it's okay. a racing lead I, and a snap take. Okay, yeah. I'm surprised yeah. Mochi didn't think about it for a longer time. But maybe it's because he's down uh, low on the clock. Yeah. Might be I the reason. Probably we just make two points instead of continuing the blitz here. It wins a little too often. It does look very natural to just make those points. Yeah, I mean, it's no well, you, having the seven and the ace together is not what you're thinking about, right? It's not really focusing on a game plan, but we're just winning the race, which is you're, the game plan yeah. we're focusing on. You're, you're just winning the race, and you do keep your blitzing availability oh, open. Plan. Yeah, you you still have a blitzing game plan. Yeah, I think we're just making a point. I think so. But which shots. one? The four point. Which we one? Give up is, the seven to do I it. Think, we minimize yes. shots. Yeah. I think the four point is the way to go. Exactly. Very good play by Mochi. And in a blitzing game plan, the four point is just as good as the five point. It might even be better, actually. Gets Six, another three. fan. Now this he's going to go for a blitz attack. Definitely. Uh, that's illegal. But yeah. Yeah. yeah there oh, yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. And then the three can just play nine to six for a distribution. Sure. Yeah, looking very good for Mochi here. Sander under a lot of pressure to roll a deuce here to stay alive. Yeah. Sander correcting Mochi there. Mochi was about yeah. to make an illegal play. Sander dancing. Oh, this doesn't look again. good for Sander. Uh, Mochi is looking to finish the blitz off. Good yeah. play, Mochi. Almost certainly going to shut him out of any match point wins today, too. That's pretty brutal. Mochi desperately needs to win this match point because he's losing the PR as it stands. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't look like he has enough time to recoup the, the PR race either. No, he doesn't have enough decisions. 6-2 just covers. Just covers here, perfect roll. Takes a minute to think about the making the five point instead. <laughs> yeah. It's more important not to get hit. Yep. Definitely. More important just to go for a blitz attack here. 
yesterday, the spinning bat was so fun. <laughs> wow, so this is likely to take us to, you know, barring any miracles, which can still happen here. It looks like it'll be a 9-7 scoreline at the end of the day. How'd you do it? Yeah, let's see if Sandra can survive the splits. That was the first yeah. first step. 5-4, it hits. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the backdoor hit. Sandra needs a 5, doesn't get it. This looks like game over for Sandra Lilov in this game. Two covers, four out. Sandra yeah. helps him out a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> very kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the UBC final. We got to get off the six here, right, to avoid double sixes. Yeah, OK, nice, fine. Double fours can bring okay. both checkers in, and then what? Uh, even out, six to two. Yeah, very nice. Ninety-six percent back uh, gammon chance for Mochi here, so Mochi is just a huge favorite. Uh, oh, he's considering this one. Uh huh. There's just no need. Your distribution's so good with that four-three-two. You're just never going to leave a shot from there. Um, this right. is closer than I would have thought. Okay. It is nice to clear the seven point, but I think, as you said, Nick, yeah. when you have a perfect distribution play anyway, it's kind of unnecessary. These are, you, you make this play if your alternative is less beautiful. Mm -hmm. Then you go for the early clearing play. Very close and wins slightly more games. Nice find Mochi, down to 49 on the clock. Yeah, that was actually interesting. It's more because of the gammon rates by keeping your opponent on the bar longer. Wow, this is a tricky one for me too. I would be erring on the side of peeling since we leave a shot now right away. But um, but the distribution is very good out there as long as we fade the 6-5, right? Yeah. Usually clearing from the rear is the safest way to win the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you just play safe here, you, you're you going to win a gammon. Yeah. Uh, but Mochi is grinding his PR down somewhat, uh, but it looks like a decisive win for Sander in the PR point here. Yeah, 4-3 to three to even out. I wonder if Mochi knew the PR, I, I was speculating whether Mochi wanted to just win a single and then have a chance to come back, but I don't think that's the case. Thank yeah. You Sander going to resign the gammon there. <sighs> oh, yeah. Sander knows he needs the PR point. Sander got all four match points on the first day, right? Yes. Yeah. And so I guess that's five to three for Sander oh, yeah. for PR points in this oh, yeah, match too, with a little bit. Yes, right? yeah. Yeah. There's the scoreboard. Sander in the lead, nine to seven, and in the actually quite a significant lead now with two point six uh, in the average PR. Yeah. So the score is nine to seven to Sander. What an interesting match we had at our hand here. Mochi had a lot of tough decisions here, and he surrendered the PR point to Sander, who yet again played another great match. What do you think about the match, Nick? Yeah, I think uh, Sander's given him a real battle for it, holding something that's definitely good enough to win. Uh, one of the best like UBC Finals performances we've seen uh, for average PR. And now with a full half a point lead in the PR, too, I think it's getting tough for Mochi to win the overall average PR battle too. So that old uh, tying at 12-12 scoreline that gives Mochi some hope, uh, that's dwindling quickly, you know? Um, yes. So I think Sander out to a pretty big lead at the end of day two again, despite a lot of challenges and kind of a rocky run of it with no match wins today too. That's right. We have to remember that Sander didn't win a single match on day two, but he won all the matches on day one. So that's funny. They went, <laughs> Sander won four on day one, Mochi won four on day two. Right, but right. Uh, yeah, Sander is looking good. Uh, after game, after match six, I was worried on Sander's behalf because he'd been playing poorly on day two, but he seems to have turned that around uh, for match uh, seven and eight. It might have been that beer that he took <laughs> early, <laughs> that he got early in game in match seven, or yeah, it it seems that he turned this his energy around and he was also more talkative. A lot of table talk going yeah. on, and it's it's rare to see somebody table talk with Mochi, you know, because Mochi has this yeah. aura of uh, aura of great greatness around him when he's sitting there at the board, you know. It's sure. Um, He's always in so a match focused. like this, yeah, I, I think Mochi's too focused to talk back much too, right? So you're not going to get a whole lot out of him. It looks, it keeps looking to me like Sanders trying, and Mochi's like, I gotta <laughs> think. Sorry. Yeah. But, 
But yeah, I really, I still don't think Mochi's on his A game for this finals either. I'm not sure if there's any like, like what's going on with that. But an average of 3.1, if you asked him, you know, if I, if you played a 3.1 average through the whole finals, I think he'd be really disappointed with that. Um, and some of these decisions that we've seen him struggle with too, it feels like they're things that he can find, you know? So I, I'm not sure if he's just getting hit with too many of the tough ones or, or what, but yeah. Yes. The, the this match was definitely a tough one for Mochi. He did have a lot yeah. of tough decisions, but I feel the same. It's like, obviously Mochi is playing world-class backgammon, 3.1. Not many players on this planet could perform at that level. But compared to his previous self, we must say that it seems he's not as sharp. He's missing yeah. that last sharpness to, yeah. that, we, that we've seen from Mochi. Uh, it might just be randomness, but who knows? Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's going to be exciting to see when they show up tomorrow for the their day three. But we get to right. see one match at a time. But they actually play four matches per day. So tomorrow sure. we'll see the first match of their day, day, day three. And yeah. it's going to be exciting to see how they, how they start He's got to grind ahead of them to take it to the distance. At least we should see a lot of that with only a two-point deficit, right? There should be at least two more matches to come, probably more. But, I mean, he's all the way down to under 15%. Maybe 15% is a good figure to throw out there for his chances of taking this down at this point. Um, I, again, I and that's assuming that it's pure 50-50, you know? Yeah, so, and I think yeah. there's something, Nick, that there is a correlation between Mochi winning points and Mochi also grinding the average PR down. Yeah, and equalizing yeah. that because if Mochi comes in and takes, uh, like, let's say, three of the four PR points on day three, sure. yeah. the average PR is also going to swing in, in Mochi's favor. Yeah, so, have we seen a half PR deficit yet, though? I, I feel like this is maybe as big of a gap as we've seen with might be, uh, quite a bit of, like, decisions behind it to kind of keep it there, too. So it's going to be harder to move the needle on that, too. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, exciting stuff, but uh, can't wait for tomorrow. It's going to be another great match. I'm sure it's been so many... It has been so many great matches so far. We're oh. very privileged about this uh, fantastic matchup, Mochi versus Sandra. It's been I want to competition. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> shout out to our sponsors, Backgammon Galaxy and FM Gammon. Shout out to the Backgammon Galaxy app, the new upcoming masterclass book. I forgot the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot my shout out. This is what happens, you know, so many matches. But yeah, word is yours, Nick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got the YouTube channel, Nick Blazer on YouTube. Uh, nice seeing more people stop by there as these go on. I've got play and explain videos, position analysis every Monday and Thursday, interviews on Fridays. So lots of cool stuff over there. Like those videos and let me know what you think of them. And my book's out, Adjusting to Match Play as well. So I think it's uh, for a lot of the technical talk we get into, it's a simple approach where you can really take your introduction to it and start applying something and feel comfortable in tournament play like off the bat. Um, so people are really liking that. So go find that on Amazon if you're interested. Very good. And I just remembered the shout out goes to uh, Grandmaster Mitch's Grandmaster analysis of the UBC final. So stay tuned. We will have the that video just as we've had all the other days coming right up. And last but not least, remember to like. Always remember to like the Backgammon Galaxy YouTube videos. It's going to help us spread uh, Backgammon via the YouTube algorithm. So that's it for us, Nick. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So see you tomorrow, guys. Looking forward Thank to it. Bye. <laughs> Are you ready to roll the dice? Now, we have the UBC Grandmaster Analysis by Michihito Kageyama. I picked up one position from today's match. The score is 0-0. Zero, zero. The cube is in the middle. Black rolled 3-2. How do you play this dice? Over the board, Sandra Lilov hides a block with a 2 and come up to the 21 point. Surprisingly, this play is a blunder by 130. Why that? I see three reasons. Reason number one, Black is behind in the race by 22 pips. It's a lot. That's why running is not the uh, purpose for Black. Black wants to build a strong home board and he's, he's the opponent checker. Reason number two, this checker 
is working something. Let's say white rose 4151 next. White wants to play like this. But in this case, black will get a double shot because of this checker. Reason number three. Even if white rolls a three and he's a, he's a blood, now black has some chance to make a nice anchor, especially from the ball, 5-4, 4-3, 3-2, they work pretty well. So with these reasons, hiding the blood is unnecessary. So what is the best choice? For two, Slotting on the four point is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, let's make a strong home board. And then for three, black had two good options. One is 13 10, unstacking the midpoint and ready to cover the four point. Another option is come up to the 21 point to see the daylight. So these two plays are almost equal. This is only the third roll, but it's so difficult. That's the beauty of backgammon. Do you like it? Did you get it? Okay, see you tomorrow, guys. Hello, everybody. This book summarizes opening concept in 21 proverbs. Once you memorize them and use them over the board, You'll become an expert in backgammon.